So I have a new pet peeve, one that is uh, in the bucket of my nerd pet peeves, not in the bucket of, say, like my jujitsu pet peeves, like spazzy white belts, but rather uh, one here that is related to statistics. So this falls in the nerd pet peeve bucket, and I only found it recently, and that is when people, uh, namely business undergraduates, do not correctly interpret confidence intervals. So. Today, we're gonna to run through really quickly the correct interpretation of a confidence interval using statistics. So here, hopefully we are all familiar with a bell curve. If not, this is a bell curve right here, the so-called normal distribution. And what this means is we can parameterize, say a random variable that follows a normal distribution by a given mean and standard deviation or variance and that is going to determine the frequency that that variable appears in a certain bucket. So we can see that with the histogram representation, and then there is a nice KDE plot here, which is that smooth curve. So this is the so-called bell curve, the so-called normal distribution, okay? So this is parameterized by what we would say population mean and a population variance, all right? And a lot of the times we are not gonna have the luxury of knowing what the true population mean and the true population variance is, okay? Now in this setting, we're gonna assume that we know the true population variance. Of course, if you watch my previous video, the central limit theorem interpretation, then you'll see why this is an important idea that is correctly estimating the parameters in one of these distributions. Uh, nevertheless, we're gonna come down here and talk about this idea of a uh, Z statistic, okay? Uh, so generally speaking, let's take that central limit theorem idea where we create a sample mean, create a sample mean, create a sample mean. We have a whole bunch of sample means. We know it's gonna follow a normal distribution. What we may not have the luxury of is repeating samples. So for example, if uh, something only occurs one time in history or uh, a series of times, we may only be able to construct one sample average that could be a potential uh, limitation here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to compute a Z-score or this Z-statistic idea here. Uh, and this is going to help us with um, hypothesis testing. But it is also used in the construction of a confidence interval, okay? So we're not gonna dive into this, we'll talk about this in a different video, but a large Z-statistic um, generally implies that we are far away from the mean, from the true mean, um, and then one that's close to the mean means that we may be indeed close to the mean. Um, that is typically you test to see if a, a mean is different from zero. Um, but again, this is just a general idea of a, a Z statistic. We'll come back to this uh, in another video on, on hypothesis testing formally, maybe in the context of uh, trading strategies and how I've used it in the past with trading strategies. Uh, let me know if that's something that you're particularly interested in. Um, but you don't formally have to understand this, this Z stat part. Um, really, you just have to know that it is a component of the so-called confidence interval, okay? So the Z score or the Z stat rather itself is going to determine the uh, bounds of your confidence interval, okay? So as your confidence increases, your bounds are going to get wider. As confidence um, decreases, your bounds are, are going to get tighter. Okay, so it may sound relatively counterintuitive, um, but think about it like this, right? You don't know. So if you want to increase your certainty, you're going to increase the width of the bounds that that true parameter may fall into. Okay, so here what I do is I just construct a, an example um, confidence interval. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this, and you're going to see we get 48 and 52 approximately. All right, so this is a 95% confidence interval. The sample mean is 50, the sample size is 100, and the standard deviation is 10. So this is a population standard deviation. If it was a sample, we would be using a t-stat instead, okay? So I'm using a 95% confidence interval, which means I need 2.5% on each tails. So I'm going to look at the 2.5%, 2.5% cutoffs on each side. So we're gonna use 0.975 from a Z table, but I'm just gonna use the PPF from a, a normal um, distribution from the stats library from SciPy. So we're gonna say, you know, import SciPy stats as stats. Come on down here, okay? So this is our, our interval. 
all right this is what I want to address in this video this 95% confidence interval for the population mean okay so our sample mean is 50 right we don't know what the population mean is all right the interpretation here is not that there is a 95% chance that the population mean falls between these two values. That is not a correct interpretation. These bounds don't mean anything in that sense as it pertains to a specific mean, okay? It does not bind a population mean. That's not what we're saying at all. We're saying that repeated samples in this fashion, if I was to construct another 100 samples, then with 95% confidence, if we did that resampling, say 100 times, roughly 95 of those intervals will contain the population mean, okay? So visually, what does that look like? So this is one sample, okay? The sample size is 100. Think of this as, I don't know, people's heights, for example, okay? And let's say that these values were the lower and upper bound for people's heights. So I went out and I got 100 people's heights. I'm gonna do this 100 times, Monte Carlo simulation style. So I go out, get another 100 people, go out, get another 100 people. Effectively, I'm gonna construct 195% confidence intervals uh, for the true population mean height, all right? These bounds are gonna be vastly different based on the people that I sample. That is literally how the confidence intervals by construction work, right? Because it depends on your sample average, it depends on your sample size, Right? And in this case, we have our sample, uh, or we have the population standard deviation. Okay, so that's technically fixed. But in reality, we're going to, when we go out and pull people, draw from here, 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 draw from here. We're not going to be drawing from a specific segment and we're saying, oh, it's bound between this and this. Like, we don't, we don't know that. Okay, so what does that look like? If I show you this chart, hopefully this becomes painfully clear. Okay, so what I have here is, let me try to raise this up here. What we have here is 100 confidence intervals, okay? So this is 100 confidence intervals, and the horizontal line is the true population mean, okay? So imagine I go out and I sample 100 people's heights, and then I do that 100 times. I construct 100 confidence intervals. That's what we see here. Now, you see how this one by my mouse misses the population mean? It doesn't contain it. That's the correct interpretation. See this one? Doesn't contain it, right? We're gonna say, roughly speaking, roughly speaking, approximately 95 of these 100 will not contain that true population parameter. That's the correct interpretation of a 95% confidence interval. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this will uh, address some of the misunderstandings related to confidence intervals um, if you have any other questions related to um, any sort of like hypothesis testing or interpretations like this, uh, feel free to let me know. If you want to see the interpretation of a, a hypothesis test, a Z statistic, really technically a T stats being used um, in the context of, of a trading strategy, specifically on social sentiment, um, leave a comment and I can make that a future video. Um, check out my recent articles. Check out um, on Quantkill. We have a course now um, building a, an algorithmic trading system using Alpaca's REST API. Um, and then perhaps, again, based on interest, I can create a course on constructing trading signals for uh, said algorithmic trading system. Um, but nevertheless, I hope this was informative. It's addressing one of my pet peeves that I didn't know I had. Uh, so that's always nice. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.